Yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of work to do um, in every way. I think uh, there's always a, a sense of like the adrenaline wearing off when the season ends and you have a 48 hours or so to start to decompress. Um, you know, and then the questions become kind of what's the first thing to address. Um, there's obviously a lot of things we've got to work on as a team, um, but getting the players geared up for their postseason programs is the first thing, you know, on my agenda to send those guys off um, with kind of a clear vision of where I see them, where we see them, give them an opportunity to have conversations with me about their own goals and things that they see and feel um, so that we can set ourselves up for the best summer possible. Danny mentioned a part of the plan was having Walker at Summer League. Mm -hmm. What can he benefit from that, and how did you see his year? Yeah, I think Walker needs to play as much as possible. Um, there's nothing that will substitute from getting live game reps. I think it's an opportunity for him to continue to hone his craft on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, I think Walker, his season was okay. Obviously had some injuries to start, and – expectations are always um, a unique thing because they can they can mess with your emotions. Um, I think if you had told me when we traded for Walker two years ago that this is the point in the map that he would be at two years in, I would have been happy. Um, but he probably overachieved in his first year and then this year, um, you know, he felt like he didn't play his best for a variety of reasons. Um, and so it makes you feel different. It's like being 500. If you win the first two and lose the second two, you feel bad. If you lose the first two and you win the second two, you feel good. Um, but you're still 500. So I like where Walker is at in terms of you know his progress over the first two years of his career. Um, now it's about attacking this summer and doing a lot of work on his body continuing to hone himself on the offensive end. And, you know, for all of Walker's good moments defensively, he can still get so much better. Um, there's things from a technique standpoint, from an understanding standpoint, um, a communication standpoint that he needs to continue to, to grow at to become the centerpiece of a good defense. Um, after... I guess the exit interviews and getting the players ramped up. What is your role in the off season with them? With the players? Yeah. Um, I mean, I obviously try to spend time with them. Off the floor is a big deal for me in the off season. Um, I think building a foundation of like a personal relationship is really important for coaches and players because we get in these moments in the season where it's emotional for all of us. There's fatigue. Um, and sometimes there's conversations that are uncomfortable. There's moments that can be heated. And if you have a foundation of a personal relationship underneath all of that, then there's never a misunderstanding of is this personal or not. Um, it allows you to coach them in a way where they – know and believe that I care about them as human beings and the, the part that I'm coaching them hard on is just about basketball. Um, the off season is a really good time to do those things. Um, the second piece is being a part of their off season workouts. I mean, when the guys are back here and they're in the gym, I'll be in the gym also. Um, it's a chance for me to dig into the minutia where in the season, I'm big picture. I'm thinking about the team. I'm thinking about the next game. I'm thinking about sort of holistic things for our program. But to get to be on the court and work with Keontae on some footwork or Taylor on some footwork, um, you know, I sprinkle it in during the season when I can, but that's not my role during the, the actual regular season. So it gives me an opportunity to do do some things and coach in a way that I don't get to when we're playing games. Will, uh, 
down the stretch of the season, you know, how difficult was it for the veterans to sit and watch the younger players do what they needed to do? And can you give us a little insight on their impact on their development and how how they maybe found a way to help even though they weren't playing? Yeah, nobody likes to not play. They're all competitive people. Um, they wouldn't be in the NBA if they weren't. Everybody wants to be out there on the court. Um, but as far as how they impacted the young players, I thought their presence was great. In the locker room, you know, you guys get to see it a little bit during the games, the way they're interacting with them on the bench. But the part that I get to see is in the film sessions, um, on the practice floor, you know, being somebody that can pull a guy aside and explain to them maybe what a coach is asking in a, in a different way. Um, you know, they're also really a sounding board for the young guys. I think frustration is a part of growing, you know, both personally and professionally. And I think there's moments where the young players are frustrated and they can vent to the veterans. And I think the veterans have an ability to, you know, give them some shared experience. Like, yeah, I went through the same thing when I was a rookie or don't worry, it's not always going to be that way. Like I went through X, Y, and Z and then this is what happened after. Um, you know, I think getting that type of feedback from somebody that's in the locker room that you respect um, and that's also, you know, quite candidly in a situation that you want to be in. Um, the veteran players are – guys that have had longer NBA careers and have had multiple contracts in the NBA. And that's what the young players are hunting. So um, I think it's really important that the veterans stay engaged the way that they did. Will they do so in the summer as well, do you think? Oh, yeah. No, the veterans will be in the gym as well. There's also guys get together off-site and work out for short periods of time. Um, there's a ton of interaction amongst the whole group during the summer. Well, has it been difficult to evaluate guys like Taylor and Bryce when <clears throat> their roles necessarily won't be like it, in an ideal world right now? Like they probably wouldn't be like starting on a team that was like going for a championship, or like playing next to three rookies on the starting unit, mm -hmm. um, passing to the guys that they were getting the passes from the guys that they were. Can you like accurately? analyze where they're growing in the situation that they were in this season? It's hard um, because there is a lot of context. Um, you want to be in a role that you can handle. And I think that there were moments where they were probably getting too much. And that's just kind of the situation that we were in. That's not their fault. That's no one's fault. Um, so, yeah, there, there's parts of it that I have to sort of just block out as, like, it's a little noisy. But there are definitely parts that it doesn't matter what your role is in terms of, like, executing on both ends of the floor um, that they can continue to grow at. I I do recognize what you're saying. Like, yeah, when you're the – let's say Keontae, for example, when you're the focal point of the scouting report versus three months ago when you're the fifth person on the scouting report – it's a whole different thing. And so it does make it hard for me to evaluate. Um, doesn't mean that I don't, but I have to make sure that I'm being fair about like what I'm actually frustrated with with them, um, what parts are within their control and what parts are, you know, I, I'm putting them in a situation where maybe they're just not quite ready for it. Do you have anything strategically that you're doing a deep dive on to evaluate? Yeah, I've got a long list. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got to we've got to figure out a lot of things defensively. Um, got to figure out how to use some of our smaller guards on the defensive side of the floor. Um, you know, guys like. Taylor, I think it's more of like a technique thing. I think he has the size and the length to be an effective player on that end, but he's got to clean up some technique. Um, you know, I think as it relates to some of the smaller perimeter players, it's what types of techniques do they need to work on most 
to make them more effective defensively. Um, you know, obviously late in the season, we shelved the zone for a bunch of reasons. Um, I'm still a big believer in our zone. And so, you know, going back and watching the parts of the season where we were playing it a good amount, and I thought we were actually were very successful and our defense was, was good in that stretch of time. Um, you know, what's the right balance of man and zone? You know, I always debate with myself, like getting back into a zone on the fly versus like, does it need to be a dead ball or a free throw? Like, is that something that we can accomplish and did we accomplish it effectively? Um, you know, the offensive side of the ball, I'm always debating with myself the balance of pick and roll and off ball. Um, I think for the most part, we've walked that line pretty well. But as personnel has changed, I need to be honest with myself about who we have on the roster and try to put them in a situation to be successful. Like that's how I've gone about it each season is I have some thematic things that I believe in as a coach, but in terms of the actual X's and O's part of it, it's always been built around who we have on the team and trying to accentuate their strengths. Um, I think I have a better understanding, especially of the young players now, um, although there is some context to things that they went through. Um, and so I've got to try to set things up in a way that they can be successful. Well, when we were talking to Danny, uh, you know, he said priority is playoff style basketball and being able to win in that scenario. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you see on this team that you think can translate to playoffs down the road? I think the the optionality of being able to do multiple things is a huge factor for me as you get to the playoffs. Um, I think I've used this analogy with you guys before. Like, I just don't think you can throw fastballs the whole playoffs and win. Um, you have to be able to pivot to something else on both sides of the floor because certain matchups give you different problems. Um, and so I think that we are building a foundation with our players of being able to switch their mindset in a game or before a game, you know, tonight's more zone, tonight's more off ball on offense. Um, this game's going to be more about you know, I go back to like the the Houston game, even lately that we won, like that's not a style really that we've played the whole year of like, we're gonna try to punish the switch through the post. That's where we felt like our advantage was. Um, that's not how we're gonna play every game, but against that defense, that roster based on who we had, it made the most sense. And so I think things like that and just sort of like their mental approach to not getting flustered by the fact that things change um, is ultimately going to help us be successful in the playoffs. Will, is there any difficulty in terms of, you know, attacking, you know, this part of the off offseason uh, up until July, knowing that, you know, the roster it has a chance to be really fluid from July to, to August? I don't think about it like that. Um, I just coach who's in the locker room. And so I'll go about it thinking about Lowry and Keontae and Walker and Taylor and Jordan, you know, John. Like I'm going about it as if like those are the guys on the team because they are. Um, and if things change, so will I. Um, I think if we always worry about what might happen, especially in this business, <laughs> We may never do anything um, because there's always like the what ifs. You see it in the off season. You see it during the season. You know, what if this person gets traded? What if this happens? What if that happens? And, um, you know, that's where being, I use the word flexible a lot. Like that's where being flexible is a strength for our program. Um, but I do think that there's a way to identify things that no matter who's on the team, we have to improve. Um, and so like, how are we going to teach it better? How are we going to teach it differently? Are there new methods we want to use in terms of our practice schedule or 
shoot around schedule or how we show the team film, you know, we tried some different things towards the end of the year that I thought were pretty effective. Um, so it's not just about X's and O's. There's a lot of programmatic stuff that I can work on as well that um, will be executed regardless of who's on the team. Well, you talked about decompressing after the season. Obviously, players will take some time off. What are your plans? Are you going to get away a little bit? What What are your off-season plans? Yeah, I'll get away some for a couple of days at a time. Um, I'm not very good at doing like something that's long. I get very antsy. Um, you know, I grew up in this business <laughs> as a – somebody that was supporting the coaches and in the video room. And so you're kind of trained to not take much time off. Um, that being said, like, it's crazy what five or six days away can do for you um, in terms of just refreshing you. So I'll try to do it incrementally. Like, I don't, hey, I'm going to go away for three weeks and come back. I'll do three or four days, come back for a bit, three or four days, come back for a bit. Um, that seems to be what works best for me. Well, we're talking a lot about the foundation of the future, but mm -hmm. I'm just curious when you look back on Team 50, what is something that you take pride in or you can hang your hat on that you did like about this last 2023-24 season? Yeah, I thought the guys played really hard. Um, I also felt like despite how the end of the season went, despite some of the noise around that, um, Nobody made excuses. Nobody complained. Nobody blamed anybody else. Um, and that's from the top down. Like, we're all in it together. What happens at the Delta Center is a reflection of all of us. Um, and we win together and we lose together. Like, that's just how this has to be. Um, it's easy to be positive and um, all bought in and locked in when it's going well, um, people tend to reveal themselves very clearly to you when things aren't going well. And I feel like I have the utmost confidence in our entire organization because even though we had some tough times at the end of the year, um, I didn't see any behavior internally that was alarming um, in terms of people getting overly emotional, um, pointing fingers, blaming others. Um, empty complaining, you know, I have written on my board, complaining is not a strategy um, because it's not. We all have to dig in and do the work. We all have a part to play, um, you know, myself obviously very much included. And so if we're not all taking our own little piece of the responsibility when it goes poorly, then I would expect you not to take any responsibility when it goes well. Um, because that's not right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, coach.